So her sample was of one bedroom apartments and all these came from a website where people voluntarily listed it. So the population is all one bedroom apartments people voluntarily listed on the website Emma used. If we look at the distribution of Emma's sample, we see that it's both skewed right and there's upper outliers. Both of those are bad news for the mean. So a disadvantage of using the mean is that it will cause Emma to overestimate the rental price. This is because the rental prices in the sample and likely the population are skewed right and have upper outliers. These characteristics will increase the mean above typical prices. The median is resistant to the skew in the outliers and a better measure of typical rental price. I think a lot of students will recognize that the mean is going to get affected by the skew in the upper outliers, but they won't explicitly say why this is a disadvantage in this context. I think the first sentence here is really important. You have to state how it will actually affect Emma. You have to say that this will cause her to overestimate the typical rental price. To develop the actual theoretical sampling distribution of sample medians, someone would have to take every possible sample of size 50 from the website's one-bedroom apartments and calculate the sample median. This is a massive task. Imagine there's only 200 one-bedroom apartment listings on this website. You would have to look at listings 1 through 50, calculate the median, then say 1 to 49 and listing 51, calculate the sample median, that's a different one. And then every little tweak you take, every unique possible sample of 50 listings is going to lead to another median calculation. And once you do every possible combination of 50 listings and calculate all those medians, that's going to be your sampling distribution for sample median. In part D, they used the bootstrap process to create a frequency table. So what they did is they took samples of size 50 over and over and over from that website and calculated the sample medians and then arranged it in this frequency table. So I arranged the table into one big table instead of three columns like they had on the AP. And then I, I counted up and then I also counted uh, down. So there was 15,000 total. So to find the 5th percentile, we need to find what sample median cuts out the lower 5% of the data. And that turns out to be the 750th sample median when you arrange the medians from least to greatest. So looking at my count up column here, um, by the time I get to 2,497.5, that's 408 medians. But then when I get to 2,500, I'm at 2,307. So the 750th lowest sample median is 2,500. Now the 95th percentile is going to be the 14,250th uh, lowest median. So when we count up, once we get to this number, uh, we'll find what cuts off the lower 95% of sample medians. Or another way to do this, it's going to be what cuts off the upper 5% of sample medians. So looking at my count up column again, I reach 14,250 somewhere in the 2,950 sample median. So my 5th percentile is 2,500 and my 95th percentile is 2,950. Notice there was actually almost 1,900 sample medians that resulted in 2,500. And there was 700 sample medians that resulted in 2,950. So from the 5th to 95th percentile, these two values don't actually cut off the middle 90% of the data. So let's figure out what percent of the data they actually do cut off. To figure that out, I'm going to look at how many values are outside of that interval. So all of these and all of these. So I see there's 408 sample medians that were less than 2,500. I also see that there were... 95 sample medians that were greater than 2,950. So if I subtract the sum of 408 and 95 from 15,000, I see that my interval actually contains 14,497 of the 15,000 sample medians. In other words, it contains about 96.7%. So in part F, we're going to tie all that together. Everything from part A, where we identified the population, to part E, where we identified the confidence level. 
So we're gonna say we are 96.6% confident that the true median rental price of all one bedroom apartments people voluntarily listed on the website Emma used is contained in the interval $2,500 and $2,950. Now, one thing you'll notice is I did round the confidence level down to 96.6. Whenever you have a confidence level, it's always a good idea to round down just to make sure you're actually that confident. If you liked my explanation of this problem, you might like my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It has 100 problems in it, and every single problem has a YouTube video like this explaining every single step, every single calculator command, everything. This question six reminds me of a few problems from my book. It's similar to question uh, 52 in particular, and also question 85. Those both have to do with sampling distributions, and 85 actually has to do with bootstrapping. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Also, if you're an AP stats teacher and you want a free copy of my book, just send me an email.